After five and a half thousand miles of sailing, we reached South America for the first time. During a relatively chilled out four day trip from Curacao to Santa Marta, we caught our first glimpses of Colombia's wild coastline. We docked straight away in a marina in the middle of Santa Marta. After five months of tropical islands, it was pretty cool to be in a city again. And for the first time in a while, we turned our backs on the ocean and ventured inland to discover the tragic story of La Ciudad Perdida an ancient civilization buried deep in Colombia's rainforest. The city is only accessible by a four day hike through the jungle. We found a local tour group to take us and our two guides, Byron and Ariel, would lead us to a series of small camps along the way. Instantly, we were struck by the beauty of the Colombian countryside. Everything was so big and majestic and it was obvious that we had something special in store. This is our first camp. It was a former cocaine factory and we quickly learned about the region's history of narco trafficking and violence. 19 years ago, a group of tourists were kidnapped from this trail by guerrilla groups. They were held for 101 days until they were finally released from captivity. Thankfully, the country has transformed in recent years and tourist kidnappings are no longer a concern. Our friends Ryan and Ali brought their miniature schnauzel jelly bean on the hike too and despite being only 30 centimetres high she managed to keep up and even joined us for a few swims too. Go! Yeah! <laughs> I thought you'd contemplating something. <laughs> On the second day, we woke at 5 a.m. and left the camp at daybreak. The surrounding vegetation thickened and the trail became more uneven. We entered into indigenous territories where four different groups live and met the Wiwa tribe, who weave bags and accessories from natural fibers, chew cocoa leaves and a crushed shell dust to feel more connected to the natural world. We stopped at one of their villages for a few hours to learn more about their culture. He's saying that the purple color represents a woman. The orange color represents men, and the yellow one represents the sunset or the sun, which is the main god of the four indigenous tribes. Yo leí la tierra y está como yo estoy registrado todo. El cocuro nuestro yo se llama Seranco. Seranco. We decided to try chewing the cocoa leaves and although it was only a subtle buzz, it definitely helped with the long days of walking through the jungle. The city sits on the flanks of the Sierra Nevada mountain range and river torrents rush from the base of each dark valley bringing fresh glacial water from the 5,800 meter summit. The insects bit hard, it was hot and humid and the highlight of each day was cooling off in the cool glacier fed rivers. Oh, it's quite cold. On the third morning we put on our wet shoes and continued along the trail at dawn. The city was only an hour away, and after crossing a small river, we found a seemingly endless stone staircase. Here comes my girl, Jimena. Made it across. <laughs> the story goes that a group of Colombian farmers first stumbled upon the staircase after shooting down a bird. And supposedly, exactly 1,200 steps lead up to the first terraces of the city. This is the last step. Well, the last 1,200 steps. And then we're there. Here comes Max. Halfway up the stairs. We didn't count, and after two days of walking through the jungle, we finally arrived at Colombia's Ciudad Perdida. 3,000 people once lived on the neatly stacked terraces that straddle the ridge. The city's inhabitants were scared away during the Spanish conquest, but it wasn't discovered until the 70s by Colombian farmers turned grave robbers who tore the city apart in a frantic hunt for gold and indigenous treasures. 
For years, the city remained a secret, until everything of value had been taken, after which its discovery was finally announced to archaeologists, who since then have rebuilt the city with the help of the same looters who tore it apart. With each consecutive terrace, the view became more and more spectacular, until we reached the highest levels and we couldn't believe what we saw. <laughs> It really was like a dream. The city is made up of 170 terraces, which once served as foundations for houses. Each time a member of the community died, they would have been buried there with their life's accumulation of riches. It's fortunate that the looters didn't take everything, and the city is still largely unexcavated. The indigenous have prevented any more destruction of their sacred city, and the unimaginable assortment of gold and treasures will remain buried beneath our feet. <gasps> so cool! Literally unfucking believable. It was almost too much. The soft morning light, the dramatic jungle, and the round mossy forms of the city. It was a privilege to spend the morning in such a beautiful environment. My dad? Yeah. There's something unusual about it. After a glorious swim in the sacred river, we turned our back on the city and began our journey home with mixed emotions. We were in awe of the beauty of the surroundings, enlightened by our encounters with the indigenous communities, yet there was an uncomfortable truth in the tragic history of the city where a place so important and sacred had somehow become a tourist attraction. As we walked back along the path, the sky began to pour. Getting back in the rain was a challenge, but despite the mud, we were still in awe at the beauty of the surroundings. For a moment, we rose out of the valleys and escaped the thick smell of the jungle to catch glimpses of an otherworldly place. And even though we, there were still other tourists around, it still felt as we were witnessing something very few people get to see. On the final day, our guide Ariel took us on a detour to show us his farm. The visit added an extra 15 kilometers onto the hike, but we were the lucky first tourists to try his homemade gondolas and sketchy river crossings. It became clear that this guy had grown up in the jungle. Ariel's farm really was off the beaten path. We crossed three rivers, and as he led us further and further away from the trail, we couldn't help but wonder, where is this guy leading us? Finally, the landscape opened up, and we arrived at Ariel's small farm, where he's almost completely self-sufficient. After a short rest, a coffee, and some of his homegrown fruits, we continued along the trail. We finished the hike with two of the most impressive waterfalls we've seen so far. After spending almost a year living on the boat, constantly sailing and being on the move, it was refreshing to get away from it all and spend some time in the jungle. This was our first taste of the beauty, culture and history of Colombia. It set the tone for a country of extremes with overflowing natural beauty and a dated reputation that the Colombian people are working tirelessly to wipe clean. Amazed yet exhausted, we returned to Elixir to say farewell to Jimena. It's my first passage ever in my life. So obviously that was really impactful and a really beautiful and like sentimental way. Yeah, a once in a lifetime experience for me, but now my life is forever changed, so I'll probably just do this again <laughs> very soon. I a, like I had a week to prepare to come out here to go meet you guys and sail, and I didn't have enough time to overthink anything. I didn't have enough time to, I just knew in my intuition that it was right and it was gonna be the time of my life and I didn't, think too much about it. I just went and I did it and yeah, I guess it surpassed my, what I thought it could ever have been in a really positive way, obviously. And like, I'm super sad to leave, but I know this won't be the last time. And I have just like a lot of different emotions right now. Just like, it just went by so quickly but also every moment was lived to its extent. Just, I don't know, I'd, living day by day, 
getting really, really hot at like 6, 7 a.m., going outside to sleep. <laughs> oh my God, everything was funny. Everything was, funny. <laughs> everything was just, we were laughing our asses off. The dumbest things that we now know, we can't actually explain to people. You just had to be there. Like, we just really got along great and we had so much fun and I'll remember it for the rest of my life. And now I'm getting all emotional. <laughs> Colombia is beautiful. Probably one of my favorite places I've ever been, if not my favorite, actually. People in Colombia are just so sweet, so friendly, so willing to help. Um, don't listen to anyone that tries to get, tell you any shit about Colombia yeah. ever. Don't ever do, like listen. Just just know that they're wrong. <laughs> Didn't have any seasickness, but I did have an experience with Dramamine, yes. Uh, it just made me very tired. And then some nights if I were, if I got too hot and I couldn't fall asleep, I would just take a little bit. But I don't know if you should put that in there. <laughs> just because it would knock me out. But yeah, no seasickness. I'm pretty surprised. Like, because I've never done like multiple days in a row of sailing, just like little day trips when I was a kid with my dad and his friends. So like not at all. In fact, it like, I felt like a baby, like rocking in my, in a bed. It was soothing. If there's any sailors in LA, hit up. Oh yeah. He yeah. Mena, experienced crew member here. <laughs> yeah, I'm really fun. I bring my speaker. I'm really fun. A synth speaker. Yeah, I can bring my synthesizer. Player. I can bring my guitar. Um, yeah, some <laughs> tunes. <laughs> Learned a lot of British slang. Belland. <laughs> <laughs> what else? What? What else, Anna? Um, wanker. Wanker. Yeah, a bottle of water. What, um, what a bottle? What the bottle of garage. 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 I saw it. I saw it in the garage. Saw it in the garage. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for not getting annoyed, or at least. <laughs> Did we I fight? Asked, there, I asked. I asked. There was like, lots of fights, right? We always. Who's <laughs> kidding? No, never. <laughs> but it's just funny, like. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> thanks for watching another update from elixir circumnavigation it would really mean a lot if you could like this video and subscribe to our channel and also if you want to see more sailing and travel content then you should go over to our tiktok because it's popping stay tuned for another video from the best country in the world we take on some new crewmates and actually go sailing this time and stumble upon this absolute gem of an anchorage